All right, so this is working. Right? All right, great. So hi, everyone. Uh, I'm David, and this is Jure. Uh, we're going to talk about Usel CR, which is the, use, um, the, uh, the organization we created a while back ago, a year and a half ago, called Usable Encryption with OTR. So yes, it's an OTR talk. We're going to go over OTR, the state of OTR, the ecosystem, and what's wrong and good about it. So <clears throat> shows of end here who heard about OTR. So you heard about OTR. So I'm guessing you're using OTR, Chauvin's, every day? Great. OK, so there's going to be a small introduction about what is OTR and what is the properties of OTR. But before that, we're going to introduce ourselves, of course. Uh, so I'm David Goulet. Uh, this is my Twitter and OTR key. Uh, the slide is going to be online anyway, so you can get it afterwards. Uh, just a shameless plug before we start. Uh, I do work on Torsox, uh, the, new, the new version of Torsox uh, at Tor. I'm not employed by Tor, so I'm just a contributor. So please check it out, test it, use it. Uh, we've fixed a shitload of stuff. Uh, RSSI OTR plugin has been rewritten from scratch also because it was uh, unmaintained and had a huge amount of problems. Uh, RSSI OTR plugins host by CryptoDotis. Uh, Kjackal, that's pretty nice. It's a small project of mine with a kernel rootkit scanner. Uh, Linux kernel with scanner, it works on 3.13. Uh, you load the module, scans your kernel, and it checks if there's a rootkit. And finally, LTTNG is what I do in my day job. Linux Trace Toolkit, maybe some of you saw me yesterday at the LTTNG tracing talk. So please contribute, test them. It's pretty fun stuff. And Yuda. So my name is Yuda from Berger. I'm also known as Dr. Wax. I would actually like to add something about the, uh, uh, about the ASC plugin we have been creating. If there are any ASC developers out there, we've been struggling with a bug for a long time. So if you're an IR, SSI, or ASC developer, please come later to us. We would like to have a chat with you. Um, ah, we left that in. Yeah. All right, so uh, what is OTR? Um, yeah, you hear me? So what is OTR, a use OTR project, a small uh, recap of what is a use OTR project, how you can contribute, how you can help us, and then the state of OTR, uh, and now afterwards. Is it nothing working? Great. So OTR is end-to-end -end encryption. It means it goes to client to client, and in between there's nothing going on from, for servers to see what's, uh, to be involved in the, com the encrypted communication. It provides four incredible attributes. This is why OCR is awesome, is that it's encryption, of course, authentication, so you know who you're talking to, deniability, and perfect forward secrecy. We're gonna explain more in depth the deniability and perfect forward secrecy part, because those are the two main attributes that are very useful for OCR. So maybe some of you use this Pigeon. This is a, a, an example of, of um, the Pigeon OTR plugin that is maintained by actually Ian Goldberg, the guy who actually maintained the lib OTR, the reference. And it's also a, the guy who not created it, but is working extensively on that. Uh, so yeah, you got this. Uh, this I, th I think those are from the pressfreedomfoundation.org. Go see there. There's, um, they have uh, wikis and autism about that. Great stuff. So very unverified and, ver and private. So unverified, you're starting to create a chat with someone else, and you don't know if you're talking to that person, uh, but you're encrypted. So you're unverified, but it's secure. But you don't, you're not sure. So at some point, you do a verification. Uh, verification of fingerprints, which is kind of a tedious process, uh, not very user-friendly. Uh, and you get to private. So the, the, la the, the bottom one is where we, it says private. It means you're encrypted and verified. So you know you're talking to someone, uh, to the person you're expecting to be. Uh, so OTR, in a while back ago, introduced the Socialist Millionaire Protocol. Uh, this is pretty neat. Uh, you ask a question to the other person, and only and this question, only this person should answer, should be able to answer it. And then the answer comes out. If it works, you're authenticated, you're verified. Uh, so this is the authentication part of OTR. Pretty useful. Every plugin that exists are supposedly uh, supporting SMP. I think some of them are not. So I'm not sure. Yeah, and this is a good thing because often, and especially nowadays, journalists use a lot of 
tools, like for example, I think I hopefully they use tails, which is a live distribution using Tor, which doesn't leave any traces. So every time you boot up tails, you have to generate a new key. And because you need to generate a new key, you can't verify that the people who uses a new key on that account is actually the same person you are talking to. So this is why SMP is really useful, because you can ask the person a question, even though they have a new fingerprint. Um, so you can verify that the people uh, you're talking to are the people you are talking to. And we can't stress this enough. Please do that every time you use OTRs. It's very important to verify the person in front of us. Or you, if you're trying to be anonymous, of course, don't verify it, right? Uh, all right, so then, perfect forward secrecy. Uh, so this is a very, very nice feature, and it has especially been being brought up in the public debate as of the Snowden era in, uh, since 2013, where uh, HTTPS now also support, uh, of course, can use perfect forward secrecy. So basically, you have a session. Uh, you're transmitting messages. It's going well. And at some point, your keys get uh, like cor uh, not corrupt, uh, compromised. So this means that from that point on, every message you're going to cre uh, uh, create will be readable by the person you got your key. But perfect forward secrecy makes sure that the, pre the message previously, well, you can't do shit about it. That's the beauty of that. So it makes things much more harder for our friend up north to America. Um, so yeah, there you're going to uh, small schematic of what's going on perfect forward secrecy. So this is very, very important in terms of uh, cryptographic and security standpoint of view where um, it, it adds very strong uh, cryptographic attributes and guarantee to your, uh, to your communication that are pretty much secure. So all right, so the deniability part. Uh, so OTR has been created with the deniability feature, which uh, explains like this in lamest term. Uh, hopefully, we didn't make any mistake, because to be honest, we're not cryptographers at all. We're just developers. But basically, deniability means you are pretty sure, you're sure, sure that you receive a message from Alice. So this is what OTR provides you as grantee. But you can't prove that it's been written by Alice. So uh, what I, what I, what's going on with that is if you get compromised with OTR, for instance, uh, you're just your communication. Well, mathematically, it can't be proven that you actually wrote the message. So yeah, it seems like a pretty nice feature, but uh, um, actually we don't know if it's being used in court or legal battle at all. Uh, and if someone here knows any, only one case where OTR logs have been used, deniability, the deniability feature of OTR has been used, please raise your hand, come in front, speak up. It's very important. Because later on in the talk, we're going to talk about the multi-party OTR situation, and deniability is one of the big problems in there. All right, so yes, protocol agnostic. This is very important. Basically, OTR is just base 64 messages that are transmitted over, an, uh, over an any protocol. So you, if you want, you can create a Twitter OTR session. Uh, so this is very great. This is pretty great, uh, um, pretty good feature. So this is why it's being implemented in a lot of protocol. RC, Jabber, XMPP, and all of those uh, unknown protocol. Offers great security, of course. It's a peer review design, and I cannot stress this enough. You all open source people, yes, but peer review is very important. Collaboration is very important. And OTR for the last 10 years, uh, it exists for the last 10, uh, approximately the last 10 years. The design are peer reviewed, the design are, are checked, are worked in a collaboration on OTR uh, mailing lists in the academics with cryptographers and developers. And this is a key feature where we know it's, it's working, it's a good, it's a good protocol. And there's a community around it. What we try to use with user TR is grow that community bigger so stuff get main thing and don't have abandoned wear. And yeah, of course, open source. And the good thing about it is that Edward Snowden is still alive because people use OTR together with Glenn Greenwald and a lot of poetry and Jacob Applebaum and a lot of other journalists around the world will use it. So thanks to OTR, which we know we work, that was not as said that it can be cracked by the NSA as of yet, as we know. Um, it's good stuff, as we can see, because yeah. people are still alive and working continuously. Yeah, I was, as I was, I was told last night, OTR fucking works because it was not still alive, as he said. Use OTR project, Jude. So, 
back in December 2012, um, we have been working on, and even before, we've been working on securing existing clients. For example, Pitchin and, and Adium, which are based on Lip Purple. Um, we found out that these, are, these clients are being used quite a bit by a lot of people, and we've been hearing quite a lot from the security community that although Pitchin is a really great client and it has a lot of functionality, um, not always usable for everyone, but it has a lot of support for protocols, it has some security issues. So, um, <coughs> we have been auditing um, some stuff and we found a lot of awful bugs, I have to say. Um, and at that point in time, we were like, gosh, if, if this is going to be so easy, we're just going to submit 1,000 patches and it's going to be a secure client in, in, in a year and everybody can use it. Um, turns out, it was a bit harder than we thought it would be. Um, we found 11 bugs in the Windows build alone, uh, which means every dynamic library um, was compromised. The, the oldest bugs were six years old, which was pretty good. Um, so then we submitted some patches and we said, hey, you know, if you're just going to ship with new, D, uh, with new libraries, you should be okay. Um, unfortunately, that patch um, took six months for Pitchin to ship. I have no idea why. Maybe they lack a lot of people. I'm not sure. Um, so in February 2011, they, they shipped the security update. Um, so at that point in time, we were like, gosh, is this, is this still a good idea to mainly focus on the security of the existing clients? And then we were like, probably not, because if we have to audit, and we'll come back to that later in, in our talk, um, if we have to audit 300,000 lines of code, that's going to be kind of an issue with the, in C. So. We decided to take another route uh, at that point in time and just to say, hey, why don't we write a new um, chat client with usability, privacy, anonymity, and encryption by default, um, which is going to be really minimal. It's going to be usable. Uh, we want to you know, work with usability people. We want to bridge gaps with journalists, with the end users quite a bit, uh, translators. And then we were like, um, well, there's some other stuff as well, and that is that we want to grow the LTR community. So at the moment, we are kind of involved into um, coming up with um, you know, ways to make this all better and make the protocols work, the, the new protocols, um, like, for example, multi-party off-the-record messaging, um, having you know, discussions about den deniability, how we can improve the clients, and what is actually what do people need from a new chat client in a really digital age where everybody is on this mobile and having like sending a message and then 15 minutes later you're sending another message. It's really asynchronous. It's not so synchronous as it was maybe, you know, six or seven years ago. So we have changed um, our mission throughout, well, uh, one and a half years. And I think what we have now is we're going to be stuck with this for... Fixing everything. Fixing everything. Yeah, <clears throat> ready to go in? Yeah, so as we've said, usability is the name of the game because usability is actually a security feature. So for example, some clients make it, well, it's not always a client issue, it's that sometimes security principles are hard to grasp for the end user. So for example, um, if you start an OTR conversation and after you're done with the OTR conversation and the, the person is still online, you finish it. So the other person finishes the um, OTR conversation and the other people say, oh, it's finished, um, but um, if I'm going to send a message, it will say that the OTR conversation is finished and I actually can't send the message. Um, so what does, the, what does the user do? They will start up Skype or um, some other client and start chatting with that thing. And that's when you lose the OTR uh, property because you're not using OTR anymore. You are using a normal chat client and that's, that's fucked up then you lose um, the security of the end user. So usability is a security feature. And we would actually like, you know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. We would like to have more discussions with people who have been working on um, chat clients. For example, like Pitchin, uh, Lip Purple, uh, Pitchin, uh, Adium, and Jitsi, and there's countless of others. I think CryptoCat is a pretty good example of how a chat client can actually work, and it's pretty usable for the end user, at least more than all the others. Maybe it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. So, 
we would like to have more discussions with developers about um, usability and also about some security f uh, bugs we have found in some clients. Um, so if there are any Jitsi people, for example, in the room, we would like to have a chat with you later on. Um, yeah. No, well, no. No? We need to talk about that slide. About that slide. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So, so as, as Judy said, uh, usability is very important. I, I'm pretty sure like in the last years, uh, everyone has been hearing that, they've been hammered about that, listening about that. So now the state of OTR, uh, this is the OTR SQL system in terms of standalone IAM clients. So there, there we go, you have uh, Psy Plus, ADM, ADM on Mac, of course, Pigeon, RSSI, uh, uh, Jitsi. So all of those uses uh, custom plugin. So OTR plugins are, uh, are created for that, that application alone. And so some of them use uh, implementation from Java, the OTR 4G, the Jitsi, for instance, I think, uh, and the Guardian project, if you know, in the mobile, uh, the mobile area. I have another slide for mobile, though. Uh, and, or they use the label TR. Label TR is a C implementation, an API. Uh, and, but they all created, it, there's no like best practices of creating a plugin. They just use a library and you try to understand uh, what Ian wrote in, a, in the comment section, and then that's it. So, what happened is when we, look, we took a look at this situation in, this, in the IAMS client, it turns out that most of the clients, except for some of them, the most, uh, the most commonly used the Pigeon, the ADM, Psy Plus uh, is being maintained. So it, well, actually the plugins are not maintained, or they're badly broken, they're not maintained, or there's one person sometimes trying to work on that. And this is actually a big issue because as OTR progress, and Actually, it doesn't progress that, fa that fast, but when it usually changes version or protocol version, well, those plugins needs to follow because else there's a huge amount of problem and security problem. Um, so this is one of the reasons we need, we need your help, just to help maintain this thing. So for instance, you, there's the uh, OTR RFC for, uh, that is being started by, uh, uh, what is his name, Peter, uh, Peter St. Saint Pierre? Peter and Paul Waters. And Paul Waters. Uh, it started on a GitHub there. If, the, if you want to add contribution, uh, or reviewed, great, an OTR RFC, so we can then have a uh, clean request for comment and use and implement uh, OTR uh, well. The Dane authentication also, it's a draft from Paul Waters. Uh, yesterday there's this uh, uh, talk about um, a DNS, uh, Dane, Dane and DNS, uh, authentication. Uh, I think it's a post fix part. That was great. Uh, this is the same for TR fingerprints. So again, please review the old draft, check those drafts. They're pretty interested. Interesting. Uh, yes, yeah, so this, we're going to have two slides about Pigeon and in purple, and Yoda is going to explain why, uh, and just to show you the issue here. Yeah, so after, as I've been telling previously, um, we've been looking into Pigeon and how we can like, you know, make things better. So what we found out is that um, Pigeon is just a bit more than 300,000 lines of C code, which is quite a bit of code. As you can see, if you look at the Tor um, code size, which is for just a Tor binary alone, it's about 120,000 lines of code. So it's almost two and a half times, three times the size of Tor. Um, and I think Pigeon, it, do we count plugins in, or is this just uh, the base? It's the old library? Pigeon uh, code repository, yeah. So it's okay. lip purple, the Pigeon, and stuff. Lip purple Pigeon, uh, which is quite a bit of uh, stuff there. Um, and of course, it also has to be multi-party, so that's why I think it's a bit bigger than efforts. Um, but as you can see, it's, it's quite a bit of C code. Um, so I've been auditing um, you know, the internals, and it has a lot of dependencies and other stuff. So we've been auditing that stuff, and um, I think it's a bit too big at the moment. Um, could you to the next? The next slide? Yes. Yeah. So since then, um, you know, this actually came out, I think, a few days ago, which was a pretty good talk about somebody um, putting in two days of his own time into auditing Pigeon and, and fixing some bugs and submitting patches. Um, a security patch also went out, I think. Um, so since 2005, it had about 60 um, CVEs. Um, 
So we've been auditing mainly the the, the, the two point um, O code base, um, which is it's getting old, it's getting a bit sloppy. Um, the three um, is upcoming, and I'm really hopeful for that. Uh, apparently, it's going to look cleaner as well, and it looks better. So I'm really looking forward, and I. From what I've seen, it, it looks more structured, and it looks like they cleaned up a lot of old code, uh, old code and made it better. So I'm really hopeful that uh, Pigeon 3.0 is going to change a lot of things, because it's shipped by a lot of distributions, and it works um, on multi-platform, um, on uh, Windows and, uh, and on Linux. So actually, could I see some hands who uses Pigeon? Yeah. OK. Yeah, we need to fix this. <laughs> Right, so there's one point that's very, very important, is that if there's lipid purple in the, in the room or pigeon in the room, it's very important to, like, uh, we need to talk about it. We're not bashing a pigeon at all. The pigeon situation here is that the security is not their focus of development. And so it's not an issue of, of they, don't, they do bad work. It's not that at all. It's maybe they, might, they don't have the resources to put out in security, or they just have done like, the experience and so on and so forth. This is why we need to work in multiple fields to create that kind of, of, uh, of secure IAM chat. Because as you've seen, it's half size of the Linux kernel networking stack. It's, it's a lot of code to maintain, especially in C. So, so they need help if they need, uh, they, they really, really need help to improve in terms of security. Uh, there's a slide share. Go there. It's, pre it's pretty awesome. Uh, uh, um, uh, quick analysis of what's going on with Pigeon. All right, so I'm pretty sure you guys know Moxie, uh, uh, the Whisper System. So there's this nice quote came out, I think, last year um, when a new IM chat client on mobile was created. I don't remember his name at all. So there is one thing here it says they generally fucked up. So they, in terms of, of own crypto, of course, you know, you shouldn't do that. This is why OCR has been created a while back ago to, to address a problem and developers can use it and not, they don't have to create their own crypto. So, of course, you create your own crypto, generally you fucked up, even though you're cryptographers or developers. It's, I mean, math mathematics is kind of close from, from uh, computing, but there's a big gap in between in terms of security. Uh, but the, only, the, only, the other part is, is that there's a small community of people. And this is actually changing in the mobile scene. As you see there, those are just some of the mobile secure chat clients you can have. Uh, so the, the, the thing about why we put on the Moxie quote is, is it's not like if you want to get involved in creating an IM chat, we're helping that. It's not because you're a newcomer, you're going to fuck it up. It's because they uh, not too much people. So we don't really agree with the Moxie. But again, uh, don't run out your own crypto. So that's the basics. But we need developers to help. Um, so, yeah, you know, the, the, so yeah, the mobile, the mobile scene is quite, a, quite impressive also. Um, and we're going to just talk about one thing here, the Guardian project. So uh, show hands who knows the Guardian project. And it's not a newspaper. No, no, it's not a newspaper. It's something different. <laughs> All right. So the Guardian Project is uh, a small organization that's been created. I think you know. I think they're based in New York, and one of the uh, one of the maintainer there, Nathan, uh, is someone else. Anyway, it's in the United States. Uh, they created this um, OTR client that goes through uh, through uh, Tor also. So it uses Jabber with OTR through Tor uh, on your mobile phone. Uh, I. I just don't remember what's the name, the Orbot or Orweb? Or yeah, it's, it's been switched recently, right? Or Fox now. Yeah. So this is a mobile metadata issue. And why metadata issue is that with that kind of solution, the metadata problems goes away, where it goes to Tor to answer that. Well, with, if you know the, the tech secure thing, tech secure, right, in Redfield. They use, it, it goes with, uh, to SMS uh, with the OTR kind of protocol, and I, the metadata is still there. So think about it when you use a secure client on your, on your mobile phone. The metadata is very important, especially with, when we know what they're doing with the metadata nowadays. Uh, so yes, Garden Project, it's awesome. They need contributors, so go help them. Uh, yes, all right, cool. MPOCR. So 
uh, again, show of hands, who heard about MPOCR, the discussion about that? So that's kind of something new, right? A few. Okay, so MPOCR means multi-party OTR, means group chat. So as of now, if you, uh, apart from RC or some fancy Jabber room, group chat is pretty difficult. Uh, so yeah, Skype uh, made it happen, but we all know what happened, what's going on in Skype nowadays. Uh, so maybe it's not a good idea to use Skype. So at OHM 2013, 30C3 and real world cryptography in 2014, uh, there was a lot of discussion with cryptographers and some developers to come up with a solution with the group chat because in cryptography, this is actually a very hard, um, I think it's a kind of unsolved situation. Uh, for this OTR case. Uh, and so they, they, came, they came together, they, they, they talked a lot, they had sessions, so the two paths that are there are the notes from those two conferences. Uh, you can check it out, of course, they're, they're open. Uh, but the main problem is that when you put a lot of cryptographers in the same room, trying to come up with a solution of MPOCR, which is in, uh, uses group chats, uh, new requirements, what is a group chat, what's going on there, in terms of technicality, language, OS, and so on, well, this is what happened. So the, the conclusion was, yes, there's the requirements, some requirements we need. Sorry, we have some problem over there, but in the end, it's just, uh, I want that name on that protocol, and that's it. But MPUTR is ex extremely important nowadays, and so CryptoCat, uh, started very recently this project plan, and they have very ambitious uh, deadlines to come up with MPOTR specification. Uh, I think it's March or April 2014 of this year to come up with the first draft of the specification after the notes. Thank you. So please check it out. Oh, again, they need help. MPOTR is a very difficult, but it's very important to have it right now. Group chat, secure group chat is very important. And deniability on that thing, uh, is a huge issue. This is why MPUTR is not, uh, it does not exist today, is that putting 100 person in a room, talking to each other, and having this deniability feature, and I repeat, deniability is mean I'm not sure who wrote that, but I'm pretty sure it's come from that person, uh, makes it extremely hard. So for the, last, for the last months, the discussion were, do we drop deniability or not? And again, there's a huge discussion about the legal precedent of deniability, and is, is it useful, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but hopefully we, can, we try to come up with a solution soon because this is really, really needed. Uh, just just going to talk quickly about CryptoCat here. Oops. So CryptoCat is, uh, is inside the browser. So I'm pretty sure you all heard about CryptoCat. There's been some issues with CryptoCat. Of course, if you don't write code, you don't write bugs. So it's inside the browser. It's a plugin. And the name of the game of that was usability and easy access, because with CryptoCat you can still stalk and share your delusions on Facebook and while chatting security. So this user interface, there was a lot of work in the UX and the UI. Uh, I didn't have a slide for that, but, but they, they work hard for that. But the problem is that, they have, of course, they have security issues, and people are using it, so this is kind of dangerous. So it's a kind of catch-22. You, 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 you don't have users, of course. Uh, you can progress. Uh, you, you can progress and improve, but you need security in the end to have more users. So. Uh, but again, CryptoCat, as of now, in terms of group chat, it's the only solution out there, like realist solution in terms of OCR and uh, group chat. So yeah, one does not simply usability property. Yeah, we got that. Uh, we do need standalone IAM client today. Of course we need, because desktop are still being used, and it's a good thing not to put everything on your mobile phone. So yes, I'm, I'm trying to go fast because it's 10 minutes. So yeah, IAM's client uh, is immigration, so you have a Facebook account that works with the XMPP. Well, use that, fine. I will put OTR on that, and that's it. Um, and just don't depend on the web browser. Uh, also, because this is today's the biggest attack vector, so maybe it's a good it's a good idea to have uh, a chat in the web browser, but it's also a good idea to not don't don't have that. Uh, so yeah, you remember those in 2000, right? So those are the old AOL, MSN stuff. Nothing has really changed. Yeah. Huh? So the issue is that nothing changed in 2014. Still here today, nothing's changed. I mean, we all we still see that kind of of interface, but the problem is that. 
you have this new reality now where you, when you send a message, you don't expect the person to be online or offline. You expect just to, this person to receive it. So yeah, the text is pretty funny, but there's also one thing here is the date. So I send a message, and then an hour later, I send another message. And at some point, he's gonna reply, this person's going to reply. But they, uh, th this, means, this means that chat brings a synchronous, uh, the new chat now uh, being used on multiple devices, the multiple devices, they sync and async. It's protocol agnostic, basically. Your mobile phone integrates everything nowadays. And so why we still, we are still, we are still using those old AOL thing? That doesn't work anymore. So the protocol needs to be uh, in, uh, improved. As OTR needs to be in, uh, in MPOTR, and LTR has to, be, uh, has to be changed, improved to support asynchronous communication, for instance, and stop being that difficult to use in normal client. So last slide. Go check that link. It's pretty awesome. It's the Chad Festo. Thanks with the guy in that, uh, at Leap, uh, the uh, L encryption access project. Uh, Chad Festo, it's actually a requirement, new basic requirements of what a chat is today. And we should think about that to create chat, pro, uh, chat uh, uh, IAM communication uh, software. So yes, I'm going fast, but this is the time we have. Big thanks to Leap. Come on our channel, use OTR, go on OTR and OTR dev if you're interested. This is where the dev happens. Well, use OTR is just to chat. Uh, the people who create plugins OTR, go on that channel. We bridge uh, developers from different projects there. Guardian Project is there, the uh, ADM guy also, SSR, of course. And yes, thanks to Leap. Uh, that is helping us a lot, so question time. Questions? Yes, one is. Hello. I have a bit of a critique. Uh, I've been trying to get into OTR for some time. You're going to speak a bit louder. Ah, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, I was saying that I've been trying to use OTR for quite some time. And I knew about the Guardian project, um, which um, now is, uh, they changed the Java client, whatever, which doesn't make OTR easy at all. In fact, it's not clear when your communication is encrypted or not. You can really start it, see if the person is offline, it will not do anything. I was looking, as you spoke, with the main OTR page and the plugins for many clients, uh, the links are broken. So I think one thing that is important for more people to use this is it seems that the basic tools to start using it are not ready yet. It seems to me that um, there, there is a strong need for this kind of work first, for more people to use it and make it um, useful. Uh, yeah, so we agree with you that. So you're basically saying that we need more uh, easy access to understand how to, to use those tools, those OTR, uh, OTR tools. So just make maybe fix the broken links on OTR pages and, and stuff like that. Yeah, and the software, the main software. Right, so yeah. So yeah, th th this is exactly why OTR has been created, is that there's an issue of using OTR in secure IAMs because it doesn't exist right now. So we, we can't rely on any client as of now, unfortunately. So, so yes, yes, um, more access to OTR. Yes, you. Uh, so have you looked into the work done by Open Whisper Systems? Uh, they have improved OTR, or so they claim. They've added uh, support for offline communication. They've uh, improved deniability and messed with the protocol. And uh, second question, uh, is there a, a planned transition for the OTR in, uh, to elliptic curve cryptography? Because there's predicted... Uh, well, wait, can you repeat this? Because I, I'm not, I can't um, hear. <laughs> is there a, a transition to elliptic curve cryptography planned for oh, yeah. OTR? Because there is script apocalypse predicted for the discrete logarithm, and uh, there are drop-in replacements for the primitives used by OTR today that use elliptic curves. So why not migrate to them? Is that planned? So the question is about... The uh, whisper system in charge and the so the question is kind of like why OTR isn't using elliptic curve cryptography right now? Yeah, so there has been discussions over the past, I think one or, or two years now about 
Um, harder? Louder. So there have been discussions ab about this for like the last year or so, or two years, and the, it, there have been some things holding it back, and that's because of patterns, basically. Um, there's been a lot of discussions, uh, especially on the OTR dev list, and the main argument was that if Red Hat didn't want to ship it or didn't dare to ship it because they don't, they, they do some elliptic curve stuff, they ship it now again in OpenSSL, but there's a really big issue with patterns that people are afraid to get, you know, prosecuted or whatever. So there are some issues there. Um, but we would like to see it happen, and I hope it will happen soon. Um, patterns might be, you know, gone for some elliptic curve stuff in the next two years or so. So maybe then it's hard to say. Hi, uh, have you heard about Telegram? It's a new app on uh, desktop. Yeah, I'm gonna walk next to you because okay. we don't have any. Okay, I'm asking about <laughs> Telegram. <laughs> Telegram, which they have published their own uh, protocol, Telegram. Mm. Telegram. Right. And my question is if you think they are kind of newcomers who are fucking it up, or it is really secure because a lot of people is using it. So, oh gosh. I actually have no idea, Telegram. I have to say. Yeah, I, I've heard of Telegram. I haven't really looked into it um, in, in depth. Um, have you? Telegram is kind of, um, they were very uh, outspoken, but Moxie, um, who you quoted just now, kind of destroyed that protocol in a couple of like hours. That's your answer. Any other questions? I have, uh, I have two questions. So uh, first, um, in the case of um, as an architecture like with Biddleby, you have IRSI and Biddleby. Uh, where do you think that OTR should be? Should it be a plugin in Biddleby, or should it be a plugin in the front-end client so that even Biddleby itself doesn't see uh, what you're uh, what you're communicating? Uh, I can answer, I can answer you right away. So Biddleby, I'm pretty sure can be set up remotely, so you can access a uh, so Biddleby server through the internet. So there you got your answer. You don't have end-to-end -end encryption if you, if you do that. So use SSR LTR, not Bitlb LTR, just for that reason. Okay. And uh, the second question, most of the clients you showed have logging functionalities. And I've only found one client where it's possible to, uh, when you go OTR, automatically turn off the logging. Yes. Uh, is this something you're planning on, on doing, or should somebody else do? Um, we've been discussing as well with the ADM uh, person, who unfortunately isn't here, but he has been working on a new release for a while now, and he has some pretty neat features, including um, logging disabled. Uh, finally, fucking finally. Th there is a debate about that, where you say, well, maybe I want to I be able to log or not be able to log. So now the consensus is, well, just give the choice not to log. I think the choice should be that for every OTR conversation you start, you, you give some kind of screen that says, do you want to log this conversation or not? Or even if it's locked after the, after the fact that you finish the conversation, it should still be in memory and not on the disk itself. There is also the there is also the bit message protocol. What are your thoughts on that? The, 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 what? the protocol of bit message. Bit it's, message. It's also a client which aims for metadata hiding email. So basically, each message is encrypted with the public key of the receiver, and all the messages are mixed within all the clients. So you don't know who I sent the message. So I think. When BitMessage actually got started, um, I think a year ago or something like that, uh, people looked at it, and I also looked at it, and I laughed at it. Um, I think it got better now, um, but you know, it's, it's still new. It's still a new protocol. So it needs some time for people to evaluate it and make it better. So all these things take you know, time to make it better. I have no idea. Um, I heard that uh, the, different, uh, the security model for the multi-party OTR is not fixed because um, at each conference you don't say exactly the same things. Do you think that uh, uh, 
you will let some time for the cryptographer to propose protocol when you have the security model, or you will just do with the uh, cryptographers that you have in your team and try something and don't go to the classical academic uh, uh, stuff and publishing and testing. So is the question is, is do we plan to use a different threat model for yeah, protocols? So do you plan to uh, publish the security model you want first and let time to different team of cryptographer to propose stuff? Oh. Or do you think you just do it yourself? Well, so one thing, one thing here is that we, if there needs to be changes to OCR, of course we need uh, a long period of time to have just discussion. Just multi-party. I'm yeah. just talking for the multi-party OCR. For the, for the what? Multi-party OCR, ah, not multi for the first one. So yes, if you go on the uh, uh, CryptoCat MPOTR project plan, uh, there's a reviewer's board, there's a specification that needs to be reviewed and at some point it's accepted. So there's a long path, away, uh, uh, a, long, a long way through accepting the specification, which is uh, trying to use it pr proof of concept and then getting it accepted. Does that answer the question? I'm not sure. Yeah, my question was, uh, okay, clearly, my question was, uh, is it any chance that uh, other teams of crypto can at submit something, or ah. is it just uh, already, uh, you know, no. there is already people, and so... Um, you can contribute if you... Okay, so I, I have no idea how it is, it's working right now at, at, at CryptoCat. Yeah. But you're, usually it would be good if, yes, there's multiple team of cryptographers looking at it. Okay. So, of course, I'm pretty sure they're going to they're gonna go that way also. Thank you. All right, so thank you. Time's up. Time's so up. if you have any other questions, you can see us in front or something else. Somewhere thank somewhere. you.